Hello and welcome to almost last main build video in this series. If you've been watching so far, thank you so much for sticking with it. And if it's been one of your first INF builds, hopefully going through it at this level of detail aimed at beginner pilots has hopefully cleared up a couple of things that you might not have been sure about. Now, at the end of last video, we'd done pretty much all the setup. The servos were installed, they were moving in the right direction to the right amount, and we checked that INAV was also correcting in the right direction as well. But we're not quite ready to go to the field. Now, it's all inside the model, it's time to do the final little bits of setup. Now, I'm going to go through each of the tabs and show you how I do it. However, if I'm being honest, I do cheat a little bit. There are two files, I'm going to put the links down below, that are designed to set up all the fixed wing stuff the way I like it, and also all the auto launch stuff the way I like it as well. Uh, all of this stuff is in the advanced tuning tab, as I'm about to show you, but it's stuff that I've used since I have 2.6 maybe, so it's been a long time, and these are the files that I just upload and that work for me. I'm going to provide them not necessarily for you to use, you just cut and paste them into the CLI, but as a reference for you just to have a look at. There is details of what all of these settings do, and again I'll put links down below to that as well. But for this setup I'm going to go through and just do the basics, so at the end of this we're ready to go to the field and actually maiden this model and get it all dialed in and actually flying. So there are a number of things that I would do before the maiden flight and some of them are in tabs that we've already had a look at. So let's go through each of these tabs and change the things that I would change. Calibration we've already done, we did that when we set the board up so we're all good for that. Mixer we've set up and we've tested so we now know that that is all working properly. All the control surfaces are not only moving in the right direction but they are also being compensated for in the right direction. We've set up all of the pieces. Now the other thing I would do here is potentially just go through and calibrate the ESC. So the way I do this is without the battery connected with it connected to the computer, pop the slider for the ESC to the very top plug the battery in, wait for the confirmation tones, and then drop the master down to zero. You'll hear the ESC confirm that you're okay. And then when you slide it up, it should immediately start. And obviously the motor in this case gets cut off by the Vifly smoke stopper, but that means that it is calibrated. That's the only thing you need to do in here. Nothing to do in ports. Configuration, I just come in here and make sure you've got everything set the way you want. For initial flight, I wouldn't worry about the battery settings. That's handy for the on-screen display to let you know when things are coming towards the end of their use. But for the maiden, we can ignore that. The only thing I make sure you've got on here, stop motors on the th low throttle, very handy for a plane so you can glide it. Then I'd also do permanently enable launch mode, we did that originally, confirm that's still on, and continuously trim servos on fixed wing. Once you've got a couple of flights under your belt and you're happy and you can switch into manual mode or acro and it flies beautifully, then you can turn this off, it's no longer needed. But what this does is it means that as you're flying along, then the iNow system is working out what the control surfaces need to be to fly straight and level. This kind of stuff that you'd normally do on the radio trims, you do it, this is done automatically for you here. Let's make sure fail safe is set for return to home, that's the whole point. Pit tuning, I wouldn't do too much in here. The default settings for iNav are pretty good and the auto tune as part of the Maiden is going to help with that. The only thing that might be worthwhile doing here is there are things like the max, maximum roll and pitch angle. I tend to like these a little bit more. Uh, this only really affects you, to be honest, in things like angle mode, horizon, it kind of plays a small part too as well. But I would increase those. It just means that you can do tighter turns, um, which can help if, when, particularly in a maiden, if you get into trouble. 
advanced tuning tab, there is quite a bit in here that we can have a look with, particularly around things like auto launch. Now I change an awful lot of these settings, things like the idle throttle I'll tend to increase so it's actually the prop is running. Lots of people think that's incredibly dangerous and it is, you have to treat the model with a lot of respect. And then I changed quite a few others of these. I'll do another video on the auto launch stuff, but I would go and uh, just watch all of those. Fixed wing navigation settings, I would increase the cruise throttle. Uh, we don't know what it needs to be at the moment, but fixed wing navigation settings, this potentially can also change the way it's going to fly back to us. Return to home settings, worthwhile having a look on here. It's going to be at least the return to home altitude, i.e. it's going to be at least that. I potentially would increase that height a little bit, make sure that even the tallest trees I'm not going to fly into, and then all the rest of it, I would keep the way it is. So let's save and reboot for that. Now we've gone through the advanced tuning stuff, we have most of everything set. We don't need to do programming, we don't need to do the receiver. The next thing we're probably interested in is actually the mode. Now we set this up originally, but let me talk about how I'd set it up for an initial flight. Now at the moment we have arming, horizon, manual and acro set up, which is the mode down here. I would make sure that you have all of those set. I would then add two more switches for two more modes that's going to be useful. One is auto-tune. I would set that for a channel, probably something like channel seven. Just go for spare ones that aren't being used for anything else. The other one is auto-level. That is really, really handy because what auto-level allows you to do is as you start flying, if you turn auto level on, what INAV will do is figure out what the auto level needs to be, i.e. what the attitude of the plane needs to be to fly straight and level. It is incredibly useful because once you've done that, then also all the servos can be trimmed to give you that same attitude as well in manual mode. So I would make sure that you have things like horizon, which is handy to check whether or not it's flying straight and level in stabilized modes. Always have manual. That means that in the event of something going horribly wrong, you can put it back into manual and fly it back yourself. And then acro, where no mode is set, is needed for you to go through the auto team stuff. And I'll show you the process I go through in the Maiden in the next video. Now we're getting into good shape here. Not a lot of other things need to be changed. The on-screen display needs to uh, be set up for the way that you want it. I'm running the DGI stuff in here. So the way I have this connected out of the back of the DGI unit, there are four cables, two of which I'm using with the FPV controller go into the flight controller in the S bus input. That's what I'm going to use instead of the controller we've set up so far. And the other two go and trans transmit and receive pins, which are going to be set for the on-screen display. But this is roughly how I want it all laid out. Do make sure that you're using the right units. There are different ones now and in INAV 5, the units that you're setting here kind of set the unit for the whole system. Now, apart from that, we're in really good shape. What I'd do is go into CLI. I would go and say diff all, and I would save that to a file. Keep that somewhere handy. It's a great reference. The other thing then I would do is then go outside in the back garden, again without the prop turned, uh, prop installed, and then just let it sit, get a GPS lock, and make sure that when you flick the arming switch, it actually arms and you have control over the throttle. If it doesn't, then come back in here and make sure and think that all of this stuff on the right hand side is nice and green. Now, this is red at the moment because, and there's hardware else has gone red as well, because at the moment the GPS isn't powered because I'm not powering it via the battery. So that is why those two are red. Everything has to be green here. So I'll plug it in and check that that is the case. Most often it's going to be the lack of a GPS lock. A GPS, when it's brand new, can take quite a while to lock up. It can take five or six minutes when it's very, very new. So again, I would do that. Just let it sit in the back garden. Just run it off a battery and just let it get a GPS lock. And then when it's happy, 
then we can go to the field. So by this point, we know we can arm it. Hopefully we know everything's done. We have gone through all of the individual settings. We are in a really great place and we're finally ready to charge the battery and go to the field. So we're about to come to the really exciting bit. We're about to go to the field. Next time I see you in this series, I'm hopefully going to be stood in a field with this model. We're going to fly it. Now there is a very defined process that I go through. I've talked about this and I will talk about it much more in the Maiden video, but let me very, very quickly just cover it here. First of all, at the field, I check that all the control surfaces are still working in the right direction. The central gravity is in the right spot. Usual pre-checks that things like the prop nut is tight and then wait for the GPS to get a lock. Once it's got a lock, then I'll arm it. I will throw the model in auto launch. That's the way that I tend to do it here. It'll go into auto launch as soon as I move the sticks on the radio, then it'll drop back into the first of the modes, which is horizon. That's going to be self level. Now I'm going to fly around in horizon. First of all, being very careful with it. As soon as I see something I don't like, I'm going to go into manual mode to try and rescue the plane to bring it back where I'm the flight controller, essentially in that instance. I'm going to fly around in Horizon. Once I'm happy that Horizon is working okay, I'm going to then try and fly straight and level. So best doing a maiden in calm weather. So I'm going to hold it so it's flying straight and level. I'm going to kind of click on the auto trim mode and I'm going to fly straight and level for a couple of seconds. And then once I'm happy, I'm going to turn auto trim off and then see if it then flies without losing or gaining altitude. We guessed at how much nose up the model needs. We set that earlier on in the series and auto trim is going to adjust that by figuring it out. Uh, it might be spot on first time. I might need to do that process a couple of times. Once I'm happy that in horizon mode, it's flying straight and level, I'll fly around for half a minute, just getting the feel of everything. That will also allow the servos to be trimmed into position by the, having the continuously trimmed servo setting up. So that means that not only is it going to be flying nice and level and perfectly in an angle mode like horizon or angle, but when I flick into manual mode, which is the next thing, that because the servos are trimmed, it's going to be trimmed beautifully for manual flight. And I'll fly it in manual and see what kind of responsiveness that I have in manual, see whether the throws that I've set, the maximum throws that we did in the video before last, are the right ones. If they're, if they're it's a bit sluggish, I can always land it and just increase those rates just a fraction. Once I'm happy with manual mode, then it's time to do the tuning. I'll put it into acro mode and then I'll initiate auto tune and I'll fly the model going from aggressive moves initially from roll from side to side and initially it'll feel very smushy technical term and it will get better and better and eventually it'll be quite responsive and then I'll do pitch mode moves going nose up nose down nose up nose down until that feels better back to do a little bit more roll back to do a little bit more pitch once it's feeling pretty good i'll kind of carry on for another 10 15 seconds and then i'll go back into manual mode and i'll check the roll rates in acro and manual and that will let me know that the auto tune for the bits that it does has done a pretty good job at that point we're kind of ready to land disarm the model and unplug the battery and we're kind of ready. So we'll go through that entire process. Hopefully it's going to work in the next video. So I'll see you there. Thank you for spending your time today watching that video. You can find me in all the usual places on social media. And if you're trying to learn about a subject, then check out the playlist. All of my videos are organized into easy to follow playlists that if you're trying to learn a topic, will take you from the basics right the way through to some pretty advanced stuff.